Hello everyone, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. Today we're going to be talking about various interesting facts about our own natural satellite, the Moon. These uh, may be already known to you or maybe these will be a complete shock to you, but here they go. There's going to be quite a lot of them and hopefully you enjoy this video. We're going to be using Space Engine to explore the Moon's surface and explore some of the really cool features on the Moon. And we're also going to basically talk about all of the science and all of the knowledge that we have about this really really cool object in space. So firstly, let's talk a little bit about the size of the Moon. It's actually the fifth largest natural satellite, which is very unusual because most of the terrestrial planets don't have large um, moons like ours. And in the previous video, I kind of tried to recreate this using Universe Sunbox 2. And um, interestingly, Moon is actually bigger than Pluto. It's, it's a much larger object than many, many other objects in space. And uh, some scientists even uh, think that maybe Earth and Moon are actually binary planets. They're Maybe Moon is actually not a Moon, maybe it's not a satellite, maybe it's just a binary planet system. And as I showed you in a previous video, it was created by a collision with a Mars-like object uh, something like 4.5 billion years ago, so this was how this object was created. And interestingly, uh, the shape of the moon itself is not really that spherical. If you were to see it from the side, so if you were to actually fly into space and look at it from the side, you would notice that it's actually kind of egg-shaped. And that's because it, it gets pulled by the Earth's gravity, um, and so it, it is kind of distorted by the gravity, but also because it does have a very unusual shape due to a possible large collision with another very large object many, many, many years ago, something like 4, point, uh, 4 billion years ago, uh, that may have landed on its far side, so it's not a perfect sphere, it's more of an egg shape. But compared to Earth, Moon is actually not that big. As a matter of fact, you could place almost 50 moons inside our Earth, and uh, so uh, maybe it is not really a planet, maybe it is actually a natural satellite, and this is actually what I and many other scientists believe today. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's fair to call this a planet or a binary planet system, because this is how we define moons, this is how we define natural satellites, and Moon is basically a typical satellite uh, that uh, not so many terrestrial planets, but so many other planets, including gas giants do have. Now, you may not know, but uh, Moon actually does have a bit of an atmosphere. As a matter of fact, it uh, just like uh, some other uh, or most other objects in space, uh, Moon has something called exosphere. An exosphere is a very thin atmosphere, and here it's actually made up of things like helium and neon and argon. A lot of them are actually um, either evaporated from the surface of the Moon or just kind of stick around and uh, uh, fly around the, the surface. and. Some of the exosphere can actually be even visible if you were to stand sort of on the surface of the moon and were to look into uh, the distance, you would actually see that there is a bit of a layer uh, that does create this exosphere. And hopefully you already know that the moon is not very close to us, it's actually very far away from us, and if you were to actually take a, an airplane and try to fly to the moon, not that it's possible, but let's just say hypothetically it would be possible, it would take you 26 days on a 747 Boeing airplane to try to get there, so it's, it's that far away. But for light, it only takes one second, so it's, a, it's exactly or almost exactly one light second away from us. And the Moon's surface is really well known for its craters and uh, different collisions and uh, impacts that it received from various objects over time. And the thing is, Earth also received th these collisions, uh, but on Earth we have uh, things like uh, thick atmosphere and also geological activity that usually covers them up with time. However, on the Moon, uh, nothing like that really happens, there's no real volcanism, there's no real um, lava flows anymore, and because of that and because there is no thick atmosphere, uh, um, the comets, asteroid collisions, and even the things like footprints stay on the moon uh, essentially forever. But the moon does have some type of geological activity, and specifically here we're talking about the moonquakes. And these actually have been measured by the Apollo uh, mission astronauts that uh, have landed different uh, seismological instruments on the moon to measure their, uh, I guess you can call them earthquakes, but they're really moonquakes. Um, and the moonquakes are caused by the tidal forces from Earth, and which are actually quite strong on the moon. And of course, the tidal forces on our planet, and specifically we're talking about the tides that you get to observe if you live near an ocean, if you live near any kind of body of water, uh, all of these tides are obviously caused by the moon. 
But technically, the tides on the moon are not as large as tides on Earth, and that's because the moon is actually tidally locked with our planet, meaning that um, every time it orbits around Earth, it has the same sort of uh, surface pointing toward us and this is why we always see the same surface from our planet we never really see the so-called dark side which is actually not a correct name it should really be called far side uh, the dark side does get sunlight uh, when the moon is dark from uh, from our planet that's when the uh, uh, other side of the moon gets the sunlight but unfortunately, we never really get to see and probably never will see the far side unless we actually go there and take a picture, which we obviously have done many, many times. So the only thing we know about the far side is from the pictures we've taken uh, with various spacecraft. And this, of course, implies that one day on the moon is almost 30 Earth days. As a matter of fact, you get 30 days of sunlight when things get really, really hot. And then you get 30 days of night when things get really, really, really cold. And even though Earth only has one moon, uh, most other objects that have moons have quite a lot. As a matter of fact, Mars itself has two moons, and they're obviously much smaller than, than our moon. Uh, but Jupiter has 67 moons, and a lot of them are much bigger than ours. Now, one thing that many people don't realize is that the moon is actually slowly moving away from our planet. As a matter of fact, uh, when it was just created, it was only about 20,000 kilometers away from us. Now it's about 300,000 kilometers away. And every year it moves uh, something like 3.8 centimeters or about 1.5 inches um, away from uh, from our planet and and so it is actually going to uh, look much smaller in the future but uh, this is actually the really interesting part and this is the very 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 unique feature that earth and moon create and I wanted to actually mention this because most people don't realize how rare these events are. And I'm talking about the solar eclipse. Now, when the moon is in front of the sun, it blocks it in such a way that it creates what we know as a solar eclipse. This uh, event is not very rare. It's actually it happens several times a year, but it is a very rare event in terms of um, other solar systems. As a matter of fact, you're very unlikely to find such a perfect solar eclipse in any other solar system uh, out there. Well, okay, you definitely find it at some point but it's actually really rare and the reason it's rare is because by coincidence the sun and the moon look almost exactly the same size in our sky now they're not obviously the same size so the moon is actually 400 times smaller than than the sun but at, at the same time um, sun is about 400 times farther away than uh, than the moon and when they actually come in front of each other, at this particular moment, it, they create this beautiful effect called solar eclipse. Uh, and like I said, it's very unlikely we'll find it anywhere else. Even if we start uh, traveling to other planets, we're very unlikely to find it anywhere else in, in the galaxy. So this coincidence is actually very unusual and it will only last for about another million years. And we basically live in, in the moment when this, uh, this particular event is possible. In the future, after about a million years, the moon is going to become small enough that uh, the solar eclipse will not even look the same and is not going to have this really awesome effect. So the fact that we are here and we actually get to observe it is a very, very unusually lucky uh, thing to have. But actually, this brings me to my next point, and this is a common misconception. So some people think that moon does look bigger when it comes closer to our planet, which is actually not true. The moon's orbit is relatively circular, and you would not be able to visually tell uh, the size of the moon apart, even when it's closer. So when the moon does look bigger in the sky, it's actually a, a visual illusion. It's a very known illusion um, that is explained more in terms of psychology and neuroscience than in terms of astrophysics. And so the moon actually does look the same no matter where you look at it if you take a picture of the moon and if you basically ignore the fact that your brain sometimes interprets things a little bit differently um, the moon's uh, actual size in the sky will always look the same and all right so let's move on i'll briefly talk about the surface of the moon as well so first of all uh, if you were to live here the sky would always look black because there is no atmosphere and exosphere is just not enough to provide uh, the refraction effect uh, the sky would always look black it would be kind of depressing but you would get to see all of the stars and all of the other solar uh, or not solar but um, astronomical objects including all of the nebulas and even andromeda galaxy would be quite visible uh, in the sky and as a matter of fact andromeda galaxy would look much bigger in the sky than even the sun and on the surface of the moon, uh, there's obviously no sound because there's no, there's no atmosphere. So um, even if you you know try to clap or try to make any sound, nobody would hear you. You would also weigh about only 70% uh, of your actual weight on Earth. So that means that you can jump six times higher than you can on Earth. 
Uh, and the surface of the moon also uh, has water underneath, but obviously it's not liquid. Um, uh, the water on the moon is either ice or uh, in gas form because it cannot actually maintain liquid form. But if we do come here and actually settle a colony, we'll be able to extract water from the rock inside the moon. And now let's talk a little bit more about the actual missions that uh, visited the moon and also talk about the human exploration of the moon. So first of all, what you may not know is that the first creature to come close to the moon was not a human being. As a matter of fact, the heroes of space explorations are turtles, or specifically a tortoise. Uh, a Soviet turtle was the first hero of moon exploration. It approached the moon uh, relatively close, didn't actually land on it, but it was the first creature to survive the moon approach. So uh, this honor goes to turtles. And in the history of all the moon uh, landings and moon approaches, which actually did start with the Soviet Luna 1 probe that um, passed by the moon in 1959, uh, in the entire history, only 12 people actually landed on the moon. And all of these 12 people were white American male. And all of them were basically of the same type of uh, personality, same type of sort of character. And 11 of them even were uh, Boy Scouts. And since then, for about 40 years now, no man has actually returned to the moon. And the first official plan to return to the moon is actually sometime in 20, late 2020s when the European and the Russian space agencies actually try, are trying to plan a mission right now that will finally settle a colony on the moon. But because uh, the original astronauts were all American, there's actually six US flags on the moon. Uh, which actually ironically all turned white by now. You wouldn't e even be able to tell if they're actually American. And that's because the sun's radiation is so powerful on the moon that it basically destroyed all of the color on the flags. Uh, and all of these flags, or actually the first flag at, at least, uh, were originally purchased uh, at a regular Sears store, at a, basically a, a store uh, that you can go down the street and buy stuff. And uh, this flag was actually only $6. So it wasn't some kind of a special material that was used in the preparation for the mission. Someone just went down the street and bought the flag from the store. Now, one interesting fact is uh, how much it costs to actually send the first man to the moon. And the, there's a really interesting comparison I found uh, on the internet. Sending the man to the moon actually cost the US as much as finding Osama bin Laden. Uh, it took 10 years to find Osama bin Laden. It also took 10 years to send the man to the moon and cost approximately $10 billion in total. Which of course makes you think about the priorities that US currently has. Uh, what was a space exploration before has now turned into the search for the terrorists. But let's not turn this video political and instead talk more about the facts. And one of the facts is actually about US again. And here, um, this was really interesting for me to find out that uh, something like 7% of people in US still believe that the moon landing was a hoax. And that's despite the fact that in 2011, um, a really, really high resolution photos of the moon were actually released. Um, and they actually showed the landing site with the flag and with the actual boosters and all of the other materials that were left on the moon uh, back in 1969. And the picture actually showed all of this in quite a lot of detail. But despite all of this, 7% of people still think the moon landing was a hoax. Which is still quite interesting because in 1969, we didn't have the technology to fake the moon landing. We only had the technology to go to the moon, but faking the moon landing would be a lot more difficult. And when the moon landing did occur, um, what's really interesting is that one of the astronauts, uh, specifically Stuart Rusa, actually took a bunch of uh, tree seeds with him. And when he returned to Earth, they replanted these seeds and they actually turned into something like 400 different trees. So technically, we actually have moon trees on our planet growing right now. And I think it's actually absolutely awesome. So uh, the seeds that they took with them on the moon were then germinated here and most of them are doing absolutely fine. And you may have seen the video of Alan Shepard hitting a golf ball on the moon. So when he did that, when he actually uh, stroked the golf ball, it drove it uh, something like half a mile away from, this, uh, from the original point of origin. And that's because obviously there's no atmosphere on the moon and because of the lower gravity, it's much, much easier to do things that are relatively difficult to do on Earth. And another fun fact about the astronauts, uh, and this is really kind of a fact that you may not realize, but Buzz Aldrin was also the first man to pee on the moon. Eh, something that you learn, right? Interestingly, uh, his mother's maiden name is actually Moon. That's right, Buzz Aldrin, the man who's still alive and kicking, who's actually a very interesting proponent of space exploration, had a mother whose name was Moon. 
And another interesting fact is that uh, currently we have technology to uh, provide high-speed internet on to the surface of the moon. As a matter of fact, in 2014, this was tested using a new laser technology. And so the internet on the moon is actually faster than the internet that we, that we have here on Earth for some locations. And um, uh, they were able to achieve speeds of 20 megabits per second. That's actually really fast. You can easily download uh, movies, watch uh, Netflix, and do a lot of other stuff from the surface of the moon, which actually makes it really, really cool because that allows us to create a colony and then also have internet connection. And this obviously creates an opportunity for uh, colonizing the moon and obviously sending a lot of really happy astronauts that can then use internet. And I think one of the last facts I wanted to mention is uh, something that the US actually was planning to do uh, back in the Cold War in, in the late 50s. And this was called Project A119. And this was um, a project, a very, very classified project that essentially was trying to show the Soviet Union how powerful the US has become. And what they were trying to do is they actually wanted to plant a nuclear bomb on the surface and then to detonate it. In other words, they were trying to detonate a nuclear weapon just to show the Soviet Union that USA was a lot more powerful. And ironically, this mission never succeeded and actually they decided to cancel it and focusing on a more uh, peaceful exploration of the moon, essentially uh, uh, culminating in the Apollo 11 mission and sending the astronauts to the moon and instead bringing uh, rocks back from it. And I think the last fact I'll mention about the moon, or not really the moon, but uh, just satellites of Earth, there is actually at least one other satellite we found. Um, this uh, particular um, satellite is actually an asteroid, and it's an asteroid called Kruithni. Uh, it's basically an asteroid that was captured by our planet, um, and it takes it about 770 years to complete one orbit around Earth, and it will stay with us for at least another 5,000 years. Now, this is really interesting because there's actually possibly other asteroids that are orbiting around our planet that we don't really know about, uh, but they are technically also our satellites and also our moons. But because their orbit is unpredictable and may actually change in the future, uh, we are very likely to still only have the moon as our main satellite. And so all of the other satellites, including Kruithni, will eventually disappear and either smack into something or just fly into the outer solar system. And well, anyway, this video is getting a little bit too long, so I would like to just stop it here and hopefully you enjoyed all of these facts about this awesome, beautiful satellite, natural satellite of our planet Earth. Hopefully you learned a little bit from this video and you enjoyed it as well. If you like this video, do subscribe, like it and share it with your friends. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Watch out for more space videos in the future and I'll game you later. Bye bye.